Again, this is something we could do in smaller steps. So for example, we can say add, which is how much to add, is one colon length of vec, which is just doing this part separately. And then we can say vec plus add. Okay. Again, if you want to assign the result to the same vector or a different vector, just put that on the left hand side and put the assignment operator. Right. So you can take this and put the result in another variable. As of now, we are not putting the result in any variable, we are just printing it out. Another problem, given a vector vec, find out how many of its elements are negative. Right? That is, we are not saying extract the negative element, we are just saying tell me how many of these elements are negative. Of course, in practice, the way we are going to do this is to use sub uh, subsetting to get the negative elements and then find out the length of that vector. Okay, So again here we've got a vector with three negative elements, three positive elements. All you have to do is to say le length of vec, vec less than zero. Right. So this vec of vec less than zero, as we already understand, gives us all the negative elements of that vector. So this is going to be a vector containing only the negative elements which is minus 45, minus 24, minus 67. And we don't want those elements. We only want how many there are. So we just say, give me the length of that. OK, so it's very straightforward. And this also we could do in multiple steps. Could say vec1 is vec of vec less than 0. So vec1 is a vector containing only the negative elements. And then we could say length of vec1. OK, so initially, uh, I would suggest that you take this easier approach that I am suggesting in each of these problems. There is no problem if you solve it the easy way. Nobody says you have to solve it uh, with one line of code or as few lines of code. No, I think clarity is most important. As long as you are able to correctly do something, that is more important than writing it succinctly. Okay. So in fact, initially, I would recommend that you go for the uh, simpler approach where you create your intermediate variables, do all of that. Don't worry about writing it like this. Okay, so here, next problem. Given a vector named vec, find the ratio of the sum of its positive elements to the sum of the absolute value of the negative elements. Okay, so I'm giving an example here. I've got a vector 20 minus 45, 35, etc., etc. So I'm saying the sum of the positive elements is on 123. That is 20 plus 35 plus 68. And the sum of the negative elements, the absolute value of the negative elements is, uh, so for each of the negative elements, we forget about its sign. So we say 45 plus 24 plus 67, and that's 136. And all we are talking about now is that ratio of the sum of its positive elements to the sum of the absolute value, value of the negative elements. So that's going to be 123 divided by 136, some number, right? So again, uh, this example is just concocted so that we can uh, you know, exercise our, our skills. Uh, but these kinds of things may sometimes even be applicable in a problem situation. right? Uh, so again, it's very easy. So first we want to do is find the sum. Uh, so I'm writing it first in a single expression, right? Sum of vec, vec greater than 0, right? This is the sum of the positive elements. And here is the sum of the negative elements, sum of vec, vec less than 0. But of course, we want the absolute value, so we minus that. Okay, Because all of these are going to be negative, so this whole sum is going to be negative. If we want to take the sum of the absolute values, we can just negate that, and this is the answer. But of course, easier would be to do it step by step. So we say sum 1 is the sum of the positive elements, sum of vec, vec greater than 0, sum 2 it's the sum of the negative elements, sum of vec, vec less than 0. Okay, Then we want the ratio sum 1 by minus sum 2. Okay, uh, This is actually wrong. Sum 1 by sum 2 is wrong. It should be sum 1 by uh, absolute value of sum 2. Okay, So take that with a pinch of salt. Sum 1 divided by minus of sum 2 or absolute value of sum 2. So next, given a vector named vec, find the ratio of some of positive, some of the same, uh, it's the same slide. But here we are saying, see what happens if there are no negative elements 
in the vector right which means what will happen is you will get uh, 0 okay so explore this and see what happens and then also try to enter this expression in R and see what happens okay so this is for you to explore and uh, you know do a little bit of research to find out what's going on okay so now we turn our attention to the data frame called empty cars which is an inbuilt data data frame in R so when you start R it loads a package by default the package is called data sets and that package has this data frame called empty cars so you don't have to load anything nothing just start R type empty cars you have it okay so that variable empty cars is already available it's got data in it okay so the data frame empty cars is built into R and you can use it directly without having to read in any data from any file so now I'm asking how many cars have above average miles per gallon okay so MPG is a column in that data frame so the question we are asking is how many cars have above average miles per gallon okay so first I'm just taking an easy approach saying let's get all the MPG values into a vector okay so M is assigned this is the assignment operator empty cars dollar MPG okay so all the MPG values alone are put into this vector called M so now we are saying above average is M of M greater than mean of M right because above average MPG means what it means M is greater than mean of M and we want only those elements so we are going to because this is a boolean vector as we've already discussed so we get that we apply that boolean vector to M and we're going to get back only those for which this expression is true and we can say how many cars have above average MPG so you say length of this okay so you can write it separately like this I think that's better in the beginning to start writing it like this later on of course you can write a single expression that combines everything okay that's what this is length of M of M greater than mean of M okay that's really what we have done here step by step okay alternately this solution is saying let's not even put M uh, put the MPGs into a separate vector and act on them let's just act on the whole thing okay so length of empty cars dollar MPG and then you know we, we instead of putting it into a vector we are just using MP, empty cars dollar MPG in place of wherever we used M earlier okay so initially I would not recommend at least this approach it will be error prone initially when you are not still used to R very much this is fine do it as simply as possible as clearly as possible in such a way that if you looked at it 10-15 days from your from when you wrote it you will still be able to understand